hope you're having a great day so far. Uh, my name is Anna. I am with the Paint Mixer. And today I am going to teach you guys how to paint this Lovers in Paris painting. Uh, and the cool thing about this piece is, although the example is done in two, you can always do it as one as well. So I'll kind of show you how you can do it single, or if you want to make this into a cute little date night, you can always put your two canvases together. So um, if you have one of our Creativity To Go kits, um, I'll go through the contents of that so we can prep our space and then we'll get painting. So if you have one of our paint mixer kits, um, you're gonna wanna open that up. And first thing to set up is, oh, <laughs> I have a little doodle in here, is your butcher paper. So we have a little sheet of butcher paper to protect your surfaces wherever you're painting, whether it's on the floor or the kitchen table, um, just wanna protect your surface. Since this is acrylic paint, it can be permanent on things like clothing, carpet, um, so keep that in mind. Maybe grab an apron if you have one, or an old t-shirt, just something you don't mind getting paint on. Also, if you have long sleeves like me, now is a good time to roll them up. Also in your kit, you're going to find some little containers of paint. So go ahead and open those up. Uh, the cool thing about this piece is it's really small. So if you got one of our kits, we're working with an eight by 10 canvas. So we don't need a lot of paint, um, but I like to go ahead and scoop my paint out of these little containers onto our palette, which in your kit is going to be a little kind of sheet of cardboard, little shirt board here but it holds paint really well. So go ahead and plop your colors out onto your palette. And I like to leave a little bit extra paint in here, some of that pure color in case I run out and need to come back later. So save a little bit in there, especially your white, because the white can get all sorts of different colors if we're not careful. Also, make sure you grab a cup of water. This is so we can rinse our brush out in between each step and it's nice to leave your brushes in here when we're not using them. That way the bristles stay nice and hydrated and uh, the paint doesn't dry on your bristles. So in our kit also, we have two brushes. One is larger. I'm gonna refer to this one as the mama brush and the little guy comes to a point. I'm gonna call this one the baby brush. So those are the nicknames I'll be given the brushes. Also make sure you grab a little napkin so that you can kind of clean your brush after each step. Make sure there's no paint left on there. And I think that is just about it for your space. Um, and I just like to also preface that even though I'm guiding you guys through this painting, you can always customize it. You can always add things, um, remove things, and make it your own. So don't be afraid to go rogue. I support it. Alrighty, starting out with our um, mama brush, larger brush, I am just going to do some sketching. So lightly sketching in yellow. And why am I using yellow? Why not black? Well, a sketch is going to be covered up, so I'm using a color that's going to be covered up easily. Yellow is really kind of it's just simple to cover up with pretty much any other color. So let's look at our example here. We have um, this road that's going to kind of get really small at the vanishing point. So I'm gonna use the term vanishing point for this point right here, where the road is smallest at the horizon line. So first up, I am going to draw a horizontal line. This is a horizon line, about two thirds of the way down. Now, if you are working as a team, so I'll, I'll make a little doodle on here. So say you are with your hubby or your good friend, and you guys wanna do this as a, uh, as a two canvas painting, your horizon line is going to come across both of them. So you wanna be painting right next to each other to make sure this line is the same across both of them. All right, so coming back to our single canvas here, we have that nice horizon line. And I'm just gonna draw a little dot. 
This is gonna be my vanishing point. So it's a couple inches from the right side of my canvas. And from this point, I'm gonna make two other dots. So one is going to be on the right side of my canvas, about an inch up. And the other one is going to be on the left side of my canvas, about an inch, inch up. So now we're just gonna connect the dots. So a nice bold lines, I'm going to connect these. Now I have my nice road. So again, vanishing point, horizon line, and here's my nice road. So this just kind of helps us map out um, the main chunks of our painting. And now we get to have some fun. So around our vanishing point, see right around here, I'm gonna start mixing some white and yellow and just some really fun dabby brush strokes. I don't know if dabby is a word, but we're gonna start our really colorful vivid sky with just some white and yellow. Now the brush strokes here are really loose. I think this is inspired kind of by the like a French impressionist style of painting. So if you've never seen uh, impressionism, Google it right now. It'll make a lot more sense. Um, so that originated in France and some artists like um, Mar Marie Cassatt, um, Monet, it's probably one that you've heard before. So it's kind of fun to look at their work and see how we can kind of steal some of those brush techniques and color techniques as well. Alrighty, so I have this nice kind of yellow glow right here around my vanishing point. Imagine like a sun, sunset right here. So now we get to play with our other colors. So on my palette here, we have some kind of primary colors and a nice green added as well. So think about what colors we can make out of these. So what happens if we do red and yellow? We're gonna get some orange. If you add white to any mix of color, it's gonna be creamier and a little more opaque. Um, so I'm gonna start with these warm tones. So reds, pinks, oranges, because they're gonna blend really nicely into my sky. My colorful Parisian sky. I'll do some red. Now there's really no rhyme or reason here. I'm just kind of enjoying mixing colors and making brush strokes. Now we have a sweet spot where we can blend our colors and that's when the paint is still wet. So to prolong that wetness, sometimes it's nice just to use a wet brush. So no paint, just water. And that makes the blending a little smoother. See how that really blended those two colors together. So maybe try that every couple strokes is to just clean your brush, use a wet brush and see how that changes things. Well, I'm just kind of adding some little bits of pink up in here and coming back in with my wet brush and just blending it around into that yellow. And it's up to you, you know, if you have some favorite colors, maybe you're really not a pink person, maybe more of a purple person, then you can maybe add some purple. So pop quiz, how do you make purple? Since I can't hear you, um, I'll just tell you, it is red and blue together. So here's red and blue together. Maybe that's a little, a little more blue, it's gonna be a little more purple there, awesome. And what happens when I add white? See how it becomes more of like a lavender or mauve? So maybe add some purple up in there, blending into your pinks and reds. As you're going along the front of your canvas, don't forget to add some love and color to your side edges. So that way, when this is all done and it's hanging right above your bed or your mantle, wherever, wherever you can really proudly display it, you won't need to buy a frame. It'll already be gallery wrapped. So, and I really like that purple color on the top. I think I might do some more kind of blue variety over on the side here. And if you want, you can kind of look at the example, take some inspiration, or you can just go with the flow. See what colors are making you smile, go with those. 
-hmm. Also, you're gonna notice that certain colors don't blend as well with other colors. So like if I do yellow and purple together, that might be a kind of a funky color. So I might do like a pink in between them. It's kind of a, a mediator. So they play nicely. Awesome. Yeah, I might just do a little more yellow down here along the horizon. Ooh, pretty. It's nice to step back from your piece every now and again, kind of see how these colors are looking together. See if you maybe want to add a certain color on another side. Like I really like this blue up in here, so I might add some more up here in the sky, just so it's a little more harmonious. So it's not just a lone blue that's kind of all over. Traces of it are found all over. All right, also if you ever, you know, are like, whoa, slow down, just press pause. Just come back, um, take your time, it's not a race. Awesome, so once you're feeling pretty good about your sky, um, notice these bushes down here, the kind of greens, we're gonna come back once this is dry a little bit. So I'm not worrying about any bushes or shrubbery, I'm just doing my nice vivid sky. I am going to let this dry a little bit. And in the meantime, I can come in here, these two triangles, are actually a lawn. So imagine you're walking in a park in Paris. Um, we're going to color this in with a deep green. So we have this really pretty like jade color. This is phthalo green. Now I'm gonna mix in a tiny bit of black, not a lot, as my base here. And I'm just gonna fill in these two zones. And you can cover up that yellow sketch line that we had you can go ahead and color color over that. Also, if you want, you can maybe add a little white into the green, see what happens. I'll tell you what's gonna happen. It's gonna be a little creamier. Maybe it'll look a little bit like toothpaste, like so. And just filling in these two lawns, these two grassy areas. Still trying to be pretty, uh, Pretty accurate keeping that horizon line pretty straight because that really defines the space. It really shows that, oh, that's the ground line. And fill in the other side. And of course, if you're working on the two canvases, it's helpful to have a similar green that you guys are kind of painting together. So it's a little more uh, teamwork if you're doing the two canvas method. So you guys might have to <laughs> kind of pick out a green that you both like. All right, feeling good about this. Starting to take shape here. Now we have this nice road on the bottom. So imagine you're in Paris, it just rains and all the streets are really reflective. It's like a mirror. So everything up here is gonna be reflected on the road. So I'm going to primarily just use warm colors. So reds, yellows, oranges to fill out my road using the mama brush, making sure she's nice and clean. And we'll start with some orange, which are red and yellow together. Just horizontal brush strokes. So the horizontal brush strokes help us kind of show the viewer that, oh, this is a road. It's um, it's not like the, the grassy part. It's not textured as much. It's a lot of horizontal lines reflecting. And it's kind of tricky once you get to the edges to keep that horizontal. So it's okay to just get right up to that green with a solid line. And then you can kind of blend it back into those horizontal lines. So notice how I'm just picking up any old warm color. So now I got some yellow kind of blending in here. No right or wrong. I think variety is going to make this really look amazing. So not all one color. Try to get some variety in there. 
All right, so I'm feeling good about this as a base. And if you look at the example, we have a lot of reflected lines that are gonna come later once we have our light posts up. It's kind of hard to know where we're gonna put our reflections if we don't have actual light sources to reflect. So we're just gonna let it dry for now. And we are going to focus on some bushes. So there's a lot going on in this painting. Just, just know that this is, this is a tough one. You got it, trust me. So with our bushes, I'm gonna start with our little brush, our baby brush. We haven't used this one yet. Um, and I'm gonna mix up some green and a little bit of white. Green, white, yellow. And what color would that make? It's kind of like a limey green. Green, white, and yellow. Doesn't have to be perfectly blended. And now I'm going to, um, just like our um, vanishing point is here, it also can work upwards with these bushes. What is she talking about? Check this out. So I'm going to take this green and in a downward diagonal, create this little bush line. So it's like a ramp going down, a down ramp, okay, on both sides. And they're going towards the vanishing point. So now that I have my kind of bush shape, I can fill it in. And I think it's fun here to play with a couple kinds of greens and even some blue even some blue mixed in with the greens, just so that this is a slightly different green than our grass. So see how those two aren't exactly the same? Because it's a little confusing if the grass and the bushes were the exact same color, then it would look like, what? Where is up, where is down? What is bush, what is grass? So just have fun with a little bit of variety here. Also, it's fun to add some kind of swirly strokes up in here. Bushes are gonna be kind of scraggly and uh, not, <clears throat> not the same texture as the rest of the painting. So add some kind of plant-like texture in there. <clears throat> I'm gonna come over on this side, do the same thing, just make sure it's a slightly different green than my grass. Swirly, bushy strokes. Coming all the way down to the grass. All right, so look at this. We already have some um, perspective from our bushes and our grass and our road. So little by little, we're starting to build something that's pretty complex. So good job so far. All righty, Le Eiffel Tower. Don't worry, the Eiffel Tower is super easy. <laughs> it really is kind of like the letter A with some, some extra bells and whistles. So I will <clears throat> use my little demo sheet here to show you the shape of the Eiffel Tower. We're going to mix up a really light gray. Now I know you probably know how to make gray, but in case you don't, it's black and white. Okay, <laughs> some people don't know. So our Eiffel Tower, the shape here is going to be a line. So we have like the letter I. From that point, we're going to make the, a thin layer A. Whoa, who knew the Eiffel Tower was that easy? <laughs> From this point, just put a little kind of a little, I don't know what's up there, a restaurant, an observatory, I don't know. But just a little kind of shape on the top. And that's about it. You can even do a little loop here on the bottom. But our Eiffel Tower is going to be partially hidden. So we don't need to add too much detail. So letter I, letter A, show you on the real thing. So light gray, baby brush. Come in over on the left side. So if you're doing two canvases, one person is the lucky one and gets to do the Eiffel Tower. Maybe you can tag team it. But anyway, coming up here to the top, starting with that letter I, just the line. And then what's next? The little skinny letter A. And then a little 
thing on the top. Make sure it's straight because I'm holding it facing the camera. Awesome. So now if you would like, you can pick up a tiny bit of black on your baby brush, not a lot, tiny bit of black baby brush, and just add some itty bitty texture on here, like the Eiffel Tower. So things like uh, maybe some light outlining. And remember, this is an impressionist painting, so not based in reality, it's an impression. It's more about feeling or capturing a mood. So there's an outlining there. Also adding tiny little X's kind of creates that um, metal-like texture that the Eiffel Tower has. I saw the Eiffel Tower when I was 15, and the only thing I really remember was that it lit up. It was very sparkly, and there were a lot of lovers around the park. <laughs> kind of like this painting. All right, there's my cute little Eiffel Tower. How cute is that? Not perfect. That's okay. Tinker with it all you like, but I'm gonna keep mine pretty loose. I like it loose. <clears throat> okay, up next, we are going to add some lights, some street lights. So see these street lights? They're just little orbs. They get smaller and smaller as they go towards the vanishing point. So I'm gonna mix up some white and a little bit of yellow. White, a little bit of yellow baby brush. And think about just making little circles. Starting really small when they're far away, they're gonna be above the grass. Remember that, these are above the grass because <laughs> I don't know any street lights that are like uh, really that small. So I'm starting out really small, getting a little bigger and a little taller, each one. See how they get bigger and taller? So these are great because they just follow the, uh, the top of your bushes, really. So starting super small, white and yellow, getting a little bigger, a little taller. It's gonna overlap some of your Eiffel Tower, that's okay. Can even come a little higher than your bushes. That's great too. So there you go. Little balls just getting bigger and taller as they come toward the edge of your canvas, starting out really small at the horizon line. And it's a good idea to hold your painting at a distance, kind of see it a little further away because you're gonna notice things you may not notice really up close. Like I'm noticing that some of my lights still need colored in, which happens sometimes whenever you're painting, not looking at it, <laughs> like a lot of these uh, kind of YouTube style ones are for me. So I gotta make sure I look at it every now and again. There we go. Awesome, just like little beads. So right now they're just floating orbs of light. Let's give them a little post to stand on. So baby brush black paint, just as straight as you can, giving them like little lollipops, a little uh, post, black post. One at a time, making sure to give each one a little love. And if you can, try to get really skinny as they go towards the vanishing point. Also, I like to um, add a little kind of black bottom, kind of holding the bottom of the lights. I think it just looks a little more realistic. If you're feeling fancy, you can even put one on the top too. There are a lot of different types of street lights. Once you start noticing these things, you're like, oh, that's a cool street light. All right. Now we have some street lights, but you know what I just noticed? I'm going to make, what I just noticed is that in the example, these street lights come down all the way to where our road begins. So 
You know, sometimes you're painting and you don't notice things. That's why we hold them back because then you notice things like, oh, these are going to come all the way down into the grass where the road begins. There we go. That looks better. So our poles are now coming all the way to the ground. Nice. Street lights usually line a street, right? <laughs> so we have that black paint on our brush. Great opportunity to um, reinforce this line of our street. So go ahead and just with that black paint, just make a nice strong line on either end of your street. Awesome. And you know, as you go along, you can kind of tinker wherever you notice there needs a little needs a little love, needs a little extra something, go for it. Take your time. Oh boy, we're getting into it. So what are some things we have left? Our cute little people. So I'm gonna show you the people up close because they seem really intimidating until you look at them up close. And look at how figurative and kind of unrealistic they are, right? It's just a little squiggle. Two little squiggles walking under an umbrella. So sometimes it's nice to get up close and you realize like, oh, that's all it is. So <clears throat> come in, back to my little practice example sheet, because it's nice to practice. Like I don't think it's normal to get it right the first time with anything, especially painting. So I'm going to use my little baby brush here and do a little demo for your people. So I think it's good to start with your umbrella. So umbrella is going to be a little rainbow shape. Nice. And kind of wiggly bottom. So underneath, our, the heads of the people are gonna be under the umbrella, I hope, staying, staying dry. So I'm gonna do my lady first. So it's kind of like a little hourglass shape. Get skinny, and then she's gonna kind of wiggle her way into her reflection. Looks like a little like jellyfish or something right now. <laughs> All right, so then I'm gonna pick up some black paint for my fella walking next to her. So he's gonna be a little more square. So he kind of starts wide, wider in the shoulders. He's actually gonna have an arm coming out to the side too. And then he's in a long dark coat. I imagine a, a, like a trench coat. And then also his legs are going to kind of become a reflection. So you can always fill in the umbrella if it helps you get a little more idea of what this will look like on the canvas. So very figurative. You can also add an arm for your lady as well. Okay, so this is super loose. Also, ours is gonna be really small since we're working on such an itty bitty canvas. So just keep that in mind. A way to get the most out of your baby brush is to sharpen the tip. So I am going to get some red paint and roll like you're sharpening a pencil. So see how that um, creates a nice point? Not a ton of paint on there. It's really helpful for things that are so small. Oh boy, I don't know if I can get close enough to the camera to show you this. <laughs> We're gonna start with the umbrella just like I did in the example. And it's okay if it overlaps some things. So I have my Umbrella shape. I'm actually going to do this in kind of a pink so it's easier for you to see. So I have my little pink umbrella top right at my horizon line. And I'll outline this in black so you can see a little better too. If we were in person, you could see this really well, but I understand the computer screens make it a little harder sometimes. So I'm just going to outline this in black so you can see it. You don't have to outline it in black right now. It's just for, just for you to see. All right, so there's my little umbrella. Reminds me of those little like watermelon gummies. 
All right, so starting with my lady, I'm gonna pick up some red. And remember, her head is underneath the umbrella, so I'm just gonna do like a little hourglass shape. It's kind of her shoulders and her hips. And then I'm just gonna kind of wiggle it down and let it become part of a reflection. And this is one of those things where you definitely want to be looking at your canvas. Awesome. And now for my gentleman in black. He is going to start more of a kind of triangle top. And he's got an arm out to the side. He is kind of boxier than the lady. He's in a long trench coat. And then I'm gonna kind of let his legs come down. And same deal, it's wet out, really reflective. He's just gonna kind of become a reflection. So another thing that's kind of fun is to add some hair on your lady. So just with some black paint, you can add a little bit of hair. And if you like, you can add some details to your umbrella. All right, whew, that's hard, not gonna lie. Not gonna lie, people are hard. But now we get to have some fun with reflection. So on the example, we have reflections from our lights here in the yellow and reflections underneath our people as well. So let me show you this up close. So when you zoom in, see how the yellow is reflected under our lights. And then we also have just some reflections from our people. It gets really loose, really expressive. So just know that there's no exact formula here. It's not like baking where you wanna have like a quarter teaspoon of this. You kinda of just go by what feels good and what looks good. So I'm going to take my mama brush because I really like the way this blend a little more than the baby brush. So I'm gonna start with um, some yellow and white reflecting some of my lights. So these are gonna be mostly kind of wiggles and some little horizontals. And you can think about starting maybe underneath the light and then wiggling out, getting wider as it comes down to the bottom of the canvas. Okay, so got some nice light reflected there. And now I'm going to play a little more with the reflections of my people. So I have this red for the lady, getting nice and wide, even blending into some of those yellows that I just put on there. And a tiny bit of black. So black can really overpower these lighter colors underneath it. So I am I have black on my mama brush, but I'm gonna remove some of it, tapping it on a napkin so that I don't have a ton on there. So now I'm going to kind of lightly and loosely add some black here on the bottom, just to kind of blend the reflections of my people a little bit more. Awesome. So this is a good time to step back from your painting, look at it and say, huh, what does this mean? What does this mean? I think when I look at mine, I want a little more interest in my bushes. So this is gonna be a little challenging because I have uh, have those lights there, so I have to kind of play operation, but I think I'll just do a little, little extra yellow kind of around my lights and along the tops of my bushes. Doesn't take much, boom. All right, so from this point, you can really do whatever you like. You can add more love to your Eiffel Tower. You can add more fun in the sky. You can go into your people and make them a little more realistic if you like. Um, really, the world is your, what is it, oyster? Is that the phrase? Anyway, <laughs> this is a really fun painting to kind of loosen up your concepts of what something should look like. So think more about um, getting the essence of something or just the beauty of a certain color rather than making something exactly how it should be. 
So I hope that you had fun with this. Maybe this was a good little date night for you and your lover. Um, maybe, you know, spend the rest of your night just hanging out with each other. You can walk down the, the sidewalk like this cute little Parisian couple. Um, but I hope that you enjoyed yourself. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to send it in the chat. Uh, at the Paint Mixer, we really love sharing your work as well. So if you want to take a picture of your finished product, um, we would love to see it. You can tag us on Instagram at the underscore paint mixer, and we would be super happy to share your work. I uh, really appreciate you guys. Um, this is a challenging painting. There's a lot going on. So just know that whatever you did, good job. Um, but check out our calendar, thepaintmixer.com, for any other upcoming creative offerings, be it in-person classes or other virtual events. Um, thanks so much. Have a wonderful day, and we'll paint together soon. All right. Bye.